constantly, right? You can be on an IATM branch, and somebody else can be updating the master branch, and you can merge every single day. And the only merge, you might still have, you will still have merge conflicts, but you'll only have merge conflicts between then and the last time that you merge, right? Because it does a three-way diff again, or three-way merge again, every single time. So I recently did this where uh, we, we did internationalization for GitHub, and I changed basically every view in the entire app to change all of the strings of English to something else. And they continued to change views, and we continued to have merge conflicts, but I only had two days worth of merge conflicts every time I did it, because I merged every, sing every two days, right, for a month. And it's no problem. It doesn't, it's very easy to do that. And then you get to the end, and you do one final merge from the master branch, and you fix whatever it is, and then you switch to master branch and merge your topic branch, and since it's based on it, it does a fast forward merge, and you don't have a problem. Is there a question? Um, so that's the nice thing about Git, is that you can merge constantly so that you never have a horrible merge conflict. Right? You can deal with it a little bit at a time. Does that make sense? Okay. Does that make sense why it's different than, than like subversion or something? Okay. So continuous merging. Now, when you're done with the branch, you can say dash D to delete the branch, and Git will check for you. If it's reachable from your current head, from whatever branch you're on, if you can walk the history of, of whatever commit head is pointing at and find the, the, the commit that that branch points to. So in this case, you can, right? If you walk master, you can find the, the commit that issue 53 points to. So if you delete this pointer, you still have a pointer that contains that commit somewhere, right? So you're not losing the work. You're just removing the, a, a superfluous pointer. Now, if you said git commit dash d itn, we would be losing work, right? Because there's nothing else that, that eventually points to this, where you can walk the history of the commits and it, and it contains this work somewhere. And so if you were to delete this, it would lose the work, right? It would still, again, this commit and, and, and all of its data would still be in your database, but you have nothing to point to it, so it's difficult to use it in any meaningful way, unless you've memorized the 40 character shell. Um, can anybody memorize 40 character shells? I just want to know what I'm working with. Okay, so. What you do in this case, since there, you know, it would be a non-fast forward merge, um, it's not a direct ancestor, you can't delete the branch, you have to do capital D. You have to tell Git specifically, I want to get rid of this and possibly lose work. And it will remove the pointer, it'll just remove that file from your you know, dot git slash refs hands. It just says, okay, remove the file. In fact, you can create branches and delete branches by just echoing SHAs into files under dot git slash refs hands if you want to. It's not a great way of doing it, but you could do it. Um, uh, so, okay, so that's branching. So now, collaborate. Everything that I've said so far uh, has been, and I've said a lot of stuff so far, uh, everything that I've said so far has been local, right? We haven't done any network, uh, anything that used the network in any way so far except for the clone command at the very beginning. Um, and so now, we're going to demonstrate how to collaborate with people. Right? How do you actually use this to do work with other human beings? Or machines, depending on your job. Okay. So, let's say that you have a, uh, a repository that has two commits in some project, and you put it on some server in your company, and you know it's DNS and stuff. So, now you have one branch in it, you have a master branch that points to the last one, you have two commits, it's fine. Now, Nick and I are working on this. We want to work on this project together. So the way that Git does this is that Nick says, git clone some URL. So this is what an SSH-based URL internally will look like. On GitHub, it's always the Git user, and we just use the, the public SSH key to see who you are, right? So you'll always say, see git at github.com. The reason why is because we just use one SSH user, but it's still SSH, right? So anyways, you say git clone, as long as this URL is SCPable, right? If, if you can SCP this, uh, if, it's, if there's an uh, absolute uh, path at the end of it, if you can SCP it, then you can use it as a Git repository. It, it uses the same SSH authentication mechanisms and basically the same way of finding where the thing is. So if that's SCPable, then it is also Gitable, and it's a Git project. So uh, Git clone, it will clone it down. And it will check out you know, whatever the main branch is, which in this case is going to be master because it's the only one there. And you'll have the exact same objects in your database. 
and you'll have a master branch that you know it just checks out for you, so you have some point to start with. And the important part is that you'll have this origin slash master. Git clone will automatically add a remote reference, which is sort of an alias to a URL. So instead of having to specify this whole URL every time you want to push or, or fetch from it, instead it says that URL is now known as the string origin, right? You can change that. You can add other ones. You can add you know, five different remotes. I'll show you how to do that in a second. But clone will set up origin, and then it will be named, all of the branches on that server will be namespaced by that. So the master branch on that server, the last time you communicate with it, will be known as origin slash master. You can do diffs on it. You can do logs from it. You can see how it differs from your master branch. right? Um, so we'll see how to do that in a second. But, but so you have a bookmark to where the server's master branch is, and then you have your own master branch that you can update. Now, uh, there's some helpful arrows for that. Now, I do the same thing. I clone it, I do exactly the same thing. Right? I get my own master branch, my own origin master, and now you can see these objects are on three different computers now. But, the, but if the main server goes down, we can take out none of these and put them back up there and start collaborating again. Right? There's no problem with that. Now, I do some work, I do a couple commits, my master branch will move because that's where the head will be, right? I'll, I'll, I'll do work, that pointer will move along with it. This one will never move until I communicate with the server. That is just a bookmark. I can't modify that directly. It's a bookmark to tell me where the master branch on the server is. Right? So that's called a remote branch. It's something that Git keeps track of to tell you where the branches on all your, where your remote servers are. Git does, or Nick does the same thing. He does some work, does some commits. You can see that the shots are different, right? We have different snapshots that we've committed locally. And then to uh, share the changes, you run git push. And git push will take changes that you have that are not on some other server and push them up to that server. So in this case, I can say git push and then origin because git clone set up origin for me instead of having, you could type out that whole URL again. But since you've already put it in the clone command, you already have an alias for it. So you say git push origin, and then the branch you want to push up. So in this case, I want to push up master, and that's it. Now, your computer will now communicate with that computer, right? It'll say, I want to push some new stuff. The other computer will say, I have a master branch at this shop. Your computer will say, OK, it will go through its history and look for that, right? Because if it can't find it, then that means that there's new work on the, on the server that you haven't incorporated yet, that you haven't taken into account. So you don't necessarily want to just override it. So it says, cool, I can see that in the history. My work is based off of that. It's all of my work is newer than that. And uh, here's the difference. And it just transfers the difference up. And the server says, all right, that's cool, and moves its pointer. right? And so now, so that's the that's push. Now Nick does the same thing, right? I, I went first, so I win. Nick does the same thing. He says, get push origin master. It does the same thing. It communicates with the, the origin server, says, I want to push some new stuff. I've got master at 9E05. It says, I don't know about that. I look through my whole history. I cannot find that commit. That is a commit, a snapshot that I'm completely unfamiliar with. So now um, it says, <laughs> it would, you can say, I want to push my stuff up there and just ignore that. But it would be mean, right? You don't want to do that. Scott's going to stop working with you um, because you're just overriding his changes, right? You might as well be using FTP. So how many of you use FTP to do source control? How many of you have? Yeah, I do. Um, OK, so now the way that you solve this is you need to get 9E05 in your history somewhere. Right? You need to take it, it, it into account and merge it into your changes before you can update the server. So <laughs> what you do is you run git fetch, and that pulls down the difference and gives you the master branch. Now the master branch of the origin server, right? If you follow the history of this, it looks exactly the same as that, right? Even though your whole database is a little bit different, the history of origin master is the same as the history of master on the origin. Does that make sense? OK, so uh, I don't know if I'm going too slow or too fast, but uh, hopefully I'm not confusing anybody too horribly. Now, you merge. So you say git merge origin slash master. Now, this is slightly confusing to some people because you do git push origin space master and then git merge origin slash master. And the reason why is because one of them is two different uh, arguments. One is saying the server I'm pushing to and the branch I'm pushing up. And this one's saying I'm merging this bookmark, right? I'm merging whatever. You can say git merge 9005 if you know what the SHA is. But I want to merge this commit. Whatever the master on the server is, I want to merge that into my master branch. So that merges it, 
you solve any conflicts, if, if you guys happen to modify the same files in the same places. Um, I don't cover this, but the way that you do that is you run git add. And once you've, once you, it'll give you some version style conflict markers in any files. You can run git status to see the list, and then when you fix them, you run git add to mark them as a result. So git add has three different things. Use it to track new content, use it to stage modified content, use it to resolve uh, uh, mer merge conflicts. Okay, so now he's modified it, he's committed it, it's cool. Now he says, go push words and master again. Right? I want to try this again. You, you blocked me last time. Now it says, okay, I want to try it again, I'm going to push. I've got master 9805. That could have changed, right? And he could have to merge it again. But in this case, he didn't. He says, I can see that in the history of my master branch now. And let's do this. And so it pushes the difference up. And it says, okay, we're good, moves the master branch. And so now we, this master branch moves as well, right? It always knows the last time you communicated with the server where the master branch on that server is. Now, Scott doesn't know where the new master branch on that server is, right? Until he runs the fetch, he's going to be behind, right? So if I ran git merge origin master, I mean, it wouldn't do anything. But you can merge remote branches. When you do the merge, it's not merging from the remote. It's merging from the last known point of that remote the last time you communicated with it. Does that make sense? It's a little bit, a little bit weird sometimes. Um, OK, so now let's say that Scott uh, checked, out it, uh, checked out a new branch at some point in the past, did some work on it. I have a branch that has, has diverged somehow. So now I want to push that branch, right? Now, even though my master branch is not up to date, I can still push issue 53. I mean, it doesn't really matter. Because it says I want to push some stuff. Git says, I've got master at A967. Uh, Scott says, I don't care because I'm not trying to push master, so I don't care what master's at right now. Um, I'm trying to push issue 53. That doesn't exist on the server, so I can push whatever I want to. It just transfers up the difference and puts an issue 53 branch up on the server. So now when Nick fetches, he'll get that down. Did I do a thing? Yeah. If Nick runs get fetch again, he'll get that changed down and get it origin issue 53. So he knows where the issue 53 branch on the origin is, the master branch on the origin, and his own master is. Right? So now all of these are in slightly different states. Well, I guess those three are the same now because he just fetched. But why would he, why would he fetch this issue of yeah. 53? He doesn't yeah. know about it. Uh, because it does that by default, so you can see what other people on your team are working on. This is, this is what we do at GitHub. Every feature that we work on, just as one example of a corporate team, for every feature that we work on, we do it in a feature branch, and we don't merge it into master until it goes out into production. That, that's the rule. So when you run git fetch, you get updates to master, whatever has been deployed in the meantime, since you know I've been in Italy speaking and something, I can go home, do a git fetch, once I get the internet access, and see what everybody's been working on. What got deployed is everything that went into master, and then all the new feature branches are new stuff that people are working on. And I can look at them and decide if I want to merge them into my experimental branches or something to make the merging easier. Uh, I was doing that for in my internationalization stuff for branches that I knew were going to go out eventually. I would merge them into my internationalization branch so that when they eventually got merged into master, it, I had less of a, of a difficult time merging master in because it was already merged in. Does that make sense? Um, okay. Now, you can run git pull. Does anybody use git pull currently? That is generally, generally tends to be a more popular command. All that it is is a fetch and then a merge. So I showed you the manual steps because that's how I do it. I never run git pull. I always run git fetch and then git merge some branch explicitly. Because what git pull does is it looks to see what branch you're currently on and then looks through a rule set that it has of, of when you clone, it sets up a tracking branch, and um, when you, th there's a bunch of weird rules on, on tracking branches that says when you're on this branch and you run the command git pull, it will fetch from this server and then automatically try and merge in one of these branches, right? And so the context changes depending on which local branch you're on. Git pull will act differently. Um, you can't explicitly say like git pull origin space master to, to, to make it very explicit that you want to fetch from origin and then merge into master branch into whatever branch you're currently in. Um, but so 